process of caviar production starts with the extraction of the roe of the sturgeon or whatever fish is used for this process, which requires using the latest technologies. The cultivation and commercial production of caviar has become quite famous thanks to overfishing in the wild. Sturgeons are raised for caviar by aquaculture all over the world, using a process in which they are received from a young age, fed, and provided with the appropriate conditions needed to ensure optimal growth of the sturgeons. Once the female sturgeon ovulates, certain tests are carried out to ascertain its quality. Some of these tests are used to ensure the quality of eggs are biopsies and ultrasounds. Various procedures are used to sedate the sturgeons, including exposure to sedatives or carbon dioxide and sedation using low electrical current. Once the sturgeon is sedated, a high frequency ultrasound scan is used to evaluate the female sturgeon's ovaries or row sacs and to gauge egg production in each fish, one at a time. The process of commercial caviar production originally involved stunning the sturgeon and extracting the ovaries. However, other methods of extracting caviar have been introduced, which involve performing a cesarean section on the female, allowing it to continue producing roe. Other farmers prefer a process known as stripping, which involves extracting the caviar from the fish through a small incision created along the urogenital muscle which is done when the female sturgeon is considered ready for processing. An ultrasound scan is used to ascertain the perfect timing. However, removing the caviar by massage may produce higher quality caviar and serve as a more sustainable source. The extraction process is followed by the preparation process, which follows a system that has not changed much over the last 100 years. Once the ovaries have been extracted from the sedated female sturgeon, they are passed through a sieve to remove the ovaries membrane. The extracted rows are then rinsed to get rid of the impurities. After the impurities check, the rows are finally ready to become caviar, which is achieved by adding a certain amount of salt for preservation and taste. The fresh product is put through a taste test and graded based on its quality. Finally, the finished products are packed into the finished products are packed into lacquer lined tins that will either undergo further processing or be sold directly to customers or be sold directly to customers as i have previously mentioned the most appreciated and expensive caviar in the world today is the beluga caviar the ocetra caviar and the savruga caviar each caviar has its specific characteristics including salt content, size, flavor, color, aroma, and many other features. And many other features for those connoisseurs. And many other features for those types of connoisseur. The rarest and cost the rarest and costliest caviar comes from the beluga sturgeon that swim in a that swim in the Caspian Sea, ordered by Russia, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Iran, and Azerbaijan. The beluga caviar is famed for its soft, pea-sized eggs, ranging from pale silver gray to black. The next most expensive caviar is the small golden sterlet caviar, which was once reserved for Iranian, Austrian, and Russian royalty. This is followed by the medium-sized, light to rich brown colored Ocetra caviar, also known as Russian caviar. Other caviars ranked in decreasing order of quality include the Gray Savruga caviar, the Chinese Kaluga caviar, and the American White Sturgeon caviar. It goes without saying that these caviars become more expensive with increasing quality. When it comes to cost, caviar is considered expensive by normal standards. The most expensive of all caviar is Almas, gotten from the Iranian Beluga fish a rare albino sturgeon from the southern Caspian Sea, between 60 and 100 years old. One kilogram of this delicacy is regularly sold for 20,000 EU, which cost around $34,500 at the time.